What about well, you? I mean, you have patients coming in to see you, and it, it would, could you pull out your needles and start giving? <laughs> but you know, she could if she wanted to. It's, it's not illegal. If you have an MD degree, you can do it. I know that. I've seen guests do it, and, and everybody else except your gardener. But that's because they want to cash in on the trade. There's that much money in Botoxing of people. But I remember the first time I got Botox was when it was first years and years ago. And it dropped, I, I, it dropped my, um, I have it up here, but it dropped my eyebrows. Right. So I went around for a couple months, like, like yeah. that. Like that until it, like an avatar. Like uh, yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Until until it relaxed enough that yeah. I could have a facial expression again. So I think that um, cosmetic surgery also has gotten right better at where to put the oh, yeah, botox. No, no, it takes a lot of so experience. You know, if you know, because botox is uh, you ha you have to know the anatomy. They're basically your weakening muscles. Right. So there are muscles that pull down. And there are muscles that pull up. Well, we want to leave the ones pulling up and just weaken the ones pulling down. But, you know, if, if you have a, a little too much stuff that drifts, drifts into those muscles pulling up, then everything goes down. And, uh, <laughs> I have you have a very speak. unhappy patient I'm for a while. Sure. What about... Um, okay. yeah, I have one other question sure. for you. I don't know if it's in your area or not, but what about the people who struggle with obesity and they have the band around their stomachs sure. to help them? lose weight yeah. more quickly and then they lose it but then they have a lot of uh, cosmetic surgery that needs to be done yeah. because they have a lot of loose skin and they have and I've seen people who've been one woman said to me she said I used to be a size 14 in a size 20 skin right and so my my cosmetic surgeon simply took my both shoulders and lifted them up and made my skin smaller. And so this was out in L.A. where yeah, everything yeah. was done. Yeah, well, those <laughs> patients, you know, and there's a lot of those patients out there. Yeah, uh, and they them. need, and hopefully this is someplace where insurance would actually yes. be helpful because, yeah. you know, they, they lost it because of the, they had, you know, but does more, they were morbidly uh, obese. And so yes. once I, but the only thing you can do is, is circumferential tummy tuck, yeah. thigh lift. Yeah. Brachioplasty, because yeah. it's all skin. You, so there's skin. there's no laser yeah, that's going to take care of that. There's no skin. lipo. Oh, yeah, it, it's big surgery, and and usually it is covered by insurance. Mm. But wait no, a minute, what you mean it? like flabby arms could be covered? If you had to have a bypass surgery because you were morbidly obese, flabby arms. <laughs> no, yes, morbidly obese, hundred hundred plus pounds, pounds. overweight. Yeah. Uh, well, I must tell you that I was with my little grandchildren um, last week. And I was at the beach, and my three-year-old came up and said, Grandma, what's wrong with your arms? There, I'm, and I'm wearing a long coat. <laughs> if I took this off, you'd see this, like, all this flat. Well, that's right. That's right. Oh, I'll say to them, I'm just waving you. know, I right. know some waving. Right. Right. <laughs> and and they have a big waving. scar. So we have Right. There's, there's, right. It's a big scar from having that done, your arms. I would say 90, maybe 95% of women have that issue. Yeah. I have a question about... Uh, those of us of color, our skin is a little thicker. Mm -hmm. We we don't. I don't think we age quite as fast yeah. as as people with very very fair skin. But are there any complications that you find uh, in operating yeah, doing sure. facial that's surgery? A, that's a really good question. First thing I ask patients who have any, you know, I, I said, well, you know, what's what's your background? You know, where you where you come from? I mean, what do you, are you, you know, if you're European? If you're uh, and also, if there, are, do you form keloids? Because keloids are a terrible problem, and usually they have scars somewhere else, and you can look at them, but sometimes not. And when they develop, they're sometimes difficult to get rid of. You have to reoperate them. You have to inject steroids. You have to use laser. Uh, some patients have to do radiation to get rid of them. So uh, that's really important. And, if and they take a good. Scar. If they if they get keloids, everybody scars, of course. I'm talking about keloid is like a tumor. It's not. It's not well, a scar. It's, it's a beyond a scar. Kind of scar. Right. It actually is growing and it's painful and it itches and it's a, it's a bit. But Mediterraneans get that as well. Sure. Yes. Um, but the Asians. 
and, and Asians get Asians and as, African Americans uh, Afro Americans so, but uh, there's a, an the American Indian in yeah. the in the African American community about melanin yes which says black don't crack right <laughs> so I've heard that many times there's but less need for fillers a and lot of plastic right. surgery because right. of melanin melanin protection kind of holds it together right. exactly but would you recommend though for someone of color that they have a, maybe a, a test of some sort to see if they would would get a, a keloid well yeah it makes a lot of sense well one test is piercing of the ears some people oh. who form keloids easily they'll get a big keloid from that so you take that kind of history uh, but I think that's a really good idea. Usually, people have other scars that you can. Look I was going to say they usually know, right? If they uh, I mean, or if so there's a family history, this is where history is important. If uh, there's a family uh, history of that, I guess if you've never had a, a, a scarring uh, incident, then you would not know if you've had. Well, probably a test is uh, without a scar. But again, even a little ear piercing Pierce, will do it okay. for people who really yeah. close. But that's a really good question, and I think that uh, there's a. Because it's a really it's a significant problem, uh, and when it occurs, uh, the patient is really unhappy. Uh, you know, you're really unhappy, and it takes sometimes multiple treatments to correct it. Yeah. No. I know. That so you better don't. avoid it, you know. And with so there are a lot of people who are not who are not excuse me, but like you were just saying about do I ever say no? I say no every day, really. Uh, I would say I, I, the, the older I get. <laughs> In doing this, probably I'm saying no to 40% of the patients. Really? Yeah, really? either they have unrealistic expectations or they've had uh, cardiac uh, disease or they have uncontrolled hypertension or they have unrealistic expectations. The managing so expectations the must be so much. Yes. So, have um, the people that come in your field say too. No. Yes. About Appearance. Yeah. You go, oh shoot. And most people don't. But want it's how you have to say no. To <laughs> it's really trained. hard. It's, it's really hard. difficult. Yeah. So, it is. how does a person pick a plastic surgeon? I mean, yeah. we know that you're well known here in Washington. Sure. Other people from around the country who might be watching us, what's the first thing you should do? Yeah. Well, I think it's important to, uh, you know, you can talk to your, your primary doctor. Uh, but so they, they're not really pro-plastic surgery or cosmetic surgery. Hopefully, maybe you've, you have some friends who've had something done. And I think that's but they don't usually tell. They don't like to tell you, right? <laughs> except, well, for this group, except for this group. <laughs> uh, so, well, one friend of mine told me of, about you. I said, when I knew, I mean, I, I knew that she knew you. And she said, oh, but he wouldn't, he said he would never cut me. He would never cut, and so he just gave me some Botox in my cheeks. <laughs> well, she looked too good to have just had Botox. Uh, well, that's <laughs> but, um, uh, it, it, it's, it's, kind of, it's like finding an attorney, you know, who, a specialized attorney. It's really very difficult, really. And if you, you know, you could look at the Washingtonian, and you know, I guess that's helpful to, to people who have been picked by their peers. I think that's good. Word of mouth is really the best. And you, you know, if you are, if you want a tummy tuck, you don't want to go to somebody like me who mostly does faces. Okay, you want to go to somebody who that's what they're doing every day or breasts. Um, so everybody, especially. But when you say question. faces, do you separate the eyes from the rest of the face, or? Well, then th that's a good question. Like uh, there's oculoplastic surgeons, okay, that do eyelid surgery. They actually do more than eyelid surgery, but I think they're particularly good at eyelid surgery. A lot of people have this ptosis, you know, where one eye is a little droopy, mm. or they have too much to drink and it droops. Very hard to fix because it's just not taking skin. You got to shorten the muscle. The, who has the most experience? Oculoplastic, because it happens as people get older. So the Medicare generation has, you know, they do these on the Medicare generation all the time. So that's the person I go to for ptosis, not me. Mm. I'm not good at it. But some, <laughs> I, only, I only do it once or twice a year. But let's say a girl has Graves' disease or something. Yeah. You would say go to an ocular? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, there is that saying that you want to go to the surgeon or the doctor who does this, whatever procedure it is that you're looking for right. again and again. Right. You know, so when you see, uh, see those doctors, if they can't show you any before and after pictures, of the particular procedure. Pictures are important to ask to see well, that. I, I don't understand that, you know, that's not, I would keep looking around. Yeah. I was going to say at least get three <coughs> names 
uh, from friends. Yeah, that's and good. go and interview them. <coughs> go and have a consultation sure. with them, and see how you relate to the person and how the person relates to you. Because if you're going to do plastic surgery on your PR, you know, <laughs> number one area, you want someone <coughs> who cares about how you will turn out. One person said to me, I said to my doctor, I don't want to look like somebody else. I just want to look like me. Refreshed. Yeah. And most people you, in Washington are that way. Yeah. Now, I'll tell you one little quick not story. In L, not in L.A., Steve. Not in L.A. <laughs> no. But it's a whole different thing. of mine came up to me when I just walked out and said, she put her hands on my face. She was fancy. You see all these lines you have? Well, I went to my plastic surgeon. And he said, don't you dare do anything. You're perfect. And I said, well, <laughs> and I put my hands on her face. I said, if all your lines don't bother you, you shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't spoken to her since. So we have not spoken. <laughs> How dare she? <laughs> well, well, I think you have given us a lot of food for thought and certainly uh, inspired me to get on the phone. <laughs> Since we're trying to make this naked aging for everybody, every woman, mm -hmm. most women can't afford it, right? Sure. Cosmetic surgery for the lower middle class, middle class American woman is off the, is not choice. Sure. But I hear so many women saying, I'm saving up for it. Right. They, right. they, they know they want it. They know mm -hmm. they're going to want it. And it's really something to put your money in the jar to save up for, although a jar full of dollars is probably not going to buy what, what most of us would like to have done, the extent sure. of what we'd like. But um, but I think it is inspirational for many women to look and read about it and think, I could do that. Sure. I'm going to save my, yeah. my dollars. Well, do you get people that come to you and say, choices. I can't afford that? Yeah. You sure, know, all, all the time. I they don't usually talk to me, they usually talk to my office manager. I, 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 well, I think that's why it's really, I mean, there's competition here. Competition keeps prices <coughs> down. You go to New York City, you know, things are all going to, everybody's going to be a little higher. Uh, a lot of people come from New York City, uh, come here because, you know, the, our prices in Washington are not at the level they are in New York City. Neither are our expenses, perhaps. But competition, you know, people, I would say most people visit three <laughs> surgeons before they make a decision, okay? And I think that's a good idea. I mean, who do you feel most comfortable with? Uh, who do you trust? Who do you, who do you feel like, you know, you has You really can't go by money then. I mean, not when you're doing your face, you don't want to You can't go by money, but you know, the, you, you can say, well, this is what Dr. So-and-so recommended. And, you know, sometimes people will sort of work with you. Uh, there are payment plans. There are uh, USA, you know, there's, you can get a, uh, the USA card and have interest free for a year. Dentists do this all the time. You know, to, to, to get your, your, all of your, uh, your teeth replaced, it's like a condominium. I know. <laughs> you know? I, I think and they all, of, they all do the, the financing. Yeah. So yeah. there's finance. Right. I think you once told me in an interview that I did with you that, that all well-trained surgeons, and particularly plastic surgeons, use pretty much the same method. Mm -hmm. You have the, 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 you're taught to uh, what? What is it called? Where you lift the them? smash? Smash. Smash. Deep plane. You, you told us about that right. uh, in a show that we did uh, once before. Right. And what you need to find is somebody who does it well. Exactly. And exactly. somebody who follows the rules, but somebody who's had experience like you. Um, I'm mean, sure that makes a big difference. Do yeah. you think you're better at it than you were right. 20, 30 years ago? And I think. I, unfortunately, I am. You know, I lecture now. When I lecture because I've been doing this a long time, and I'm not only am I getting better results, I'm faster, I have fewer complications. You know, I think for the first ten years, we should pay the patients. You know, because we're learning basically. You know, I'm joking a little bit. A little bit, I'm joking about. But don't get anybody brand new then. Hmm. I can't, I can't You've say almost that. said that. I can't say that. But well, I think but I, experience is so important. Whether you're sculpting. Uh, doing uh, television, uh, interviews, um, right? Absolutely. And I think that a lot of doctors now have quite a widespread group of patients and they will try to meet you where you are with a payment plan, with right. this, with a that. 
And women are very smart. The younger women simply start saving. They say to their families, for my birthday, I will just take some money or cash or whatever, and they put that away, and when they're ready, they can go and have it sure. done, whether it's dental work or right. uh, cosmetic surgery or whatever it is. So I don't think, I think the other thing, though, that we should discuss is the shame factor. Mm -hmm. Because in some cultures, there's a lot of judgment against beauty and against altering yourself, they say, and they have a lot of judgment. And so I get to work with people who need to address that in their cultures. Sure. And they should not feel held back about doing something that will increase their career opportunities, that will make them feel better after they've dealt with obesity or they've dealt with some, you know, strange little Right. Or something they Deformity inherited that they can't something. do much about. So and which yeah. cultures don't agree? I don't know if I want to say that. <laughs> well, I mean... But there, you know. there's just judgment in some cultures that you should not be narcissistic and that you should not be showy and that you should not put right. that kind of money into your looks. But they're that way about... If my feeling is if you're going to buy a couple of Manola Blonics, you might as well go get a couple of implants <laughs> <laughs> if you need your teeth done, you know, uh, because it's just a matter of choice. Yeah, right. And if you go to somebody who's encouraging and says to you, you will feel good after you've done this because it's worried you all of your life, and we'll do this and we'll do that and we'll do the other. And they come away feeling very, very, very good. So I think if anybody is considering plastic surgery, they just need to do their homework, right? Do your homework. Figure out. And oh, look is... inside. Don't look right. look Homework outside. inside, too. How much right. do you really want to do? And, right. And, and what do you want at the end of the day? Um, you're not trying to be a movie star. You're just trying to be the best you that you can be. Right. Right. And one more quick question, and we might insert this somewhere else mm -hmm. because it might not come at the end. But, um, you know, a lot of plastic surgeons advertise their own special way of doing things. I know there's one out in L.A. who talks about the ponytail lift. Mm -hmm. What is that? Do you, have you ever had anybody come it, in and ask you? It's what I call you? the S-lift. <laughs> I call it what? I call it the S-lift, you see. So I have my own little thing. I've written about the S-lift you know, a few years ago. S refers to stealth, so it's hidden into the ear instead of in front of the ear, okay? The ponytail lift is a variation. It stops here. In other words, the, the incision doesn't go behind, so that you can't, if you want to wear your hair in a ponytail. It's marketing. It's, it's marketing. Marketing. It's just, marketing. It's just marketing. Yeah. It's just marketing. That you're doing something about... a little different, you know? Yeah. It's like... Um, you know, people are talking about D-plane versus SMAS versus we do a kind of accommodation. Whatever really works is, you know, there's no best way to do it, okay? Uh, but in question, your, your question about, uh, you know, how do you find somebody? Uh, the other thing, that we do have social media. And uh, social media does, if people are not nice to their patients, you can read about it on social media. I think it's forced do people to... you check to, yours out? Uh, I do, and I've got I've got a couple of bad things. I mean, there were a couple of patients I didn't want even have my patients though. So you have to be, you know, <laughs> right. there's a, there are ways of you know there, you can there's some evil forces that sometimes can happen in uh, in social media. But I think it's a it's it is a way to start for people who don't have three people to, to talk to. Right, well, Steve, I want you to say something about hair transplant. Oh, oh yeah, 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 it's gigantic. Right. Now. Right. And it is. It is. And I, it, it's one of my specialties. <laughs> that's yeah. right. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. mostly my, you know, faces, eyes, nose, hair, lipo, and we've in, we've incorporated the laser in almost all these uh, procedures now. Not the laser on the outside, but on the inside, which gives us extra 18% skin tightening, faster recovery, less bruising. So I think that has really helped uh, recovery because people in Washington, prior to Zoom, anyway. They want to get back to their offices. Yeah. You know, they can't take two months off. Two weeks they can do, though, you know? Ten days for sure. Uh, hair is, you know, I'm doing a lot, almost as much, many uh, patients 
women patients as yeah. men patients now. It used to be mostly men. Most men. Men have male men. pattern baldness. It's pretty straightforward. It, you know, you take a history. Their brother had it. Their father or grandfather or their maternal grandfather had it. So there's some medications for them. Okay. There's the and, and there's Propecia. medications for Propecia and finasteride. And there are medications for women finasteride. They can't take the Propecia mm-hmm. because it can cause birth defects. Can cause what? Birth, birth defects. defects. So you have to be uh, if they're cautious of that, you know. Uh, but, you know, usually they have a family history. But you have to rule out things like um, polycystic ovary disease, thyroid disease. Women, is, it's a, it requires much more of a medical approach. Whereas men are pretty much, it's androgenic or it's male pattern baldness. But do you find you're getting more women? I'm getting more women, yes. Yeah. A majority of we, who we do is men. Yeah. And, you know, it used to be um, hair transplants that they do like 100 grafts. And there was like 25 to 30 hairs in each graft. But as you they continued to bulb, those grafts stood up like doll hair. <laughs> Joe Biden had that one time. If you remember. He had his old top. <laughs> well, he had, it, he had it, it redone. It looks much more natural now. But now we start at eight. We finish at three or four. Uh, we transplant thousands of grafts. Only one and two hair and maybe three hair grafts. So it looks... Totally natural, which is, I think, the big, big advantage, you know? Well, I remember when it first uh, got to be such a hot thing, uh, the men that I saw would have a, a crescent piece taken out of the back right. of right. their head. And then that would be punctured, and the plugs would be put in. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. now it seems to have changed so that um, what's happening is it's done sort of hair by hair, and right. they don't end up with that big scar across the back. Right, it's called. And the, now the even liquid. across the front, you can do it, and you, people don't see this uh, a cut line, right? Well, and you, you can, can put hair graphs in there if they, if they yeah. do see it. But, but I mean, what yeah, about this laser um, one strip, one hair at a time thing? It's not really a laser. It's a uh, there are robots that are doing it now. Yes, okay. yeah. Is it you as get painful? a robot. Is it as painful? It's the same. It's even a longer procedure. <laughs> it yeah. takes some people at times. It takes two days uh, to get the same number of. Well, I have one as patient who went to New York and did it. Yeah, yeah. Two days so, in the, in the wow. no, you most patients, most patients are awake for this. Yeah. Because you can't keep them under anesthesia for eight mm-hmm. hours, you know. Eight hours a day for two <laughs> days. Yeah. No. But is it effective for women who have male pattern baldness? Well, is it, it, yes. If so, many times for women, I'll do a biopsy, mm-hmm. send it to make sure it's not one of these uh, unusual things, lupus or sarcoid, or one of the unusual things that uh, they wouldn't be a good candidate because the grass wouldn't take. Uh, and then we do them, yeah. And it's the same: one, two, three hair grafts. Uh, but it takes a long time before you see the results, you know. Yeah. Uh, nothing happens like, like planting, planting corn. You put them in, nothing happens for four to six months. And then they start growing at about a half a millimeter a month. But eventually they get to be long and beautiful and, and they're there forever. Yeah. Wow. It doesn't, sp- it doesn't come out like... Those don't come out because we're taking them with men. You see, even bald men, yeah. you know, this hair never disappears. Mm-hmm. So you, you put it here and it behaves like it's there. So it's very, it's incredible about the the, the biology biology of the uh, of hair. What about the paper about it in college? Uh, runs about again depends where city you're in. You know, uh, it can be anywhere between ten and fifteen thousand per session. Per session. Well, all day session. Uh, right, right. But you know, until until we find a, a cure, they're working on that. Uh, you know, guys are going to probably need a second session at some point in their life. Well, we asked you to come for a half hour, but you say, <laughs> well, I you t- here. Well, time is flying, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so it's, like, really, it's yeah. like this was all rehearsed. Your, your questions were fabulous. You know? Well, we, we really they got, and so were your answers. Oh, thank and you. And uh, we knew that we could expect to get good answers from it's you. And thank you so much. Anybody have one last question you want to ask, Dr. I have a few. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Anyway, thank you all for being with us. We look forward to having you with us for another episode of Naked Aging.